which of the following species can establish a symbiotic relationship with other organisms moving on to the options one by one as you can see we have a lot many options ranging from cnidarians fungi protozoa so we will be taking each each entity one by one uh, if we talk of cnidarians corals form a part of cnidarians corals have a symbiotic relationship with an algae called zooxanthellae which provides the corals with a vibrant colorful pattern as well as a steady source of food thus alternative a that is cnidarian is correct but what about the other options as we are well aware that fungi and algae they also form a symbiotic relationship resulting in the existence of lichens which means that the alternative b fungi also holds a place in the correct category moving on to the third alternative that is protozoa if i talk of protozoa they also have a tendency towards symbiotic relationships many protozoan species such as leishmania they can be found in human body thus if we look at it we have all the options in the correct answer that means we can very conveniently strike off option a because it includes only 1 and 2 b can also be striked off similarly c and we are left only and only with option d which has all 1 2 and 3 so d is the correct option for the answer which of the following statements are correct about the deposits of methane hydrate the first statement states that the global warming might trigger the release of methane gas from these deposits this is correct because many methane hydrates are covered in permafrost such as in antarctica or arctic ice and with global warming all this methane that has been trapped may start to come out thus statement a statement 1 holds true second statement suggests that large deposits of methane hydrate are found in arctic tundra and under the sea floor uh, the statement is correct as well which means that there is a possibility that option a and d either a or d might be correct moving on further the third statement states that uh, methane in atmosphere oxidizes to carbon dioxide after say a decade or two normally it takes 9 to 10 years of oxidation to start which means that usually it takes a decade or two to convert this uh, into carbon dioxide thus the statement is correct as well which means that the option d uh, which has all the components of 1 2 and 3 is the correct option so we have d as the correct option consider the following animals hedgehog marmot and pangolin the question on the screen wants to ask you that when presented with a threat or a risk which of the following animals roll itself into a spherical shape so that the predators cannot attack them or their soft underbelly out of all these alternatives it is seen that hedgehog and uh, for that matter pangolin they are the most ideal uh, organisms for practicing that the marmot on other hand if we talk of marmot this is a groundhog like uh, rodent that does not engages into this kind of an activity so the correct answer here is d that is 1 and 3 only and we can strike off the rest of the options which are available magnetite particles suspected to cause neurodegenerative problems are generated as environmental pollutants from which of the following from all the available options which we have here on the screen you should be able to identify which activities produce magnetite or which activities produce other by products but first consider this can an iron ore be produced by a microwave oven or uh, a microwave stuff is it possible that telephone lines will end up producing an iron ore certainly not as a result you can see that alternatives 3 and 5 we have alternatives 3 and 5 they can be um, very clearly you know removed from the li list 
and this leads to the elimination of option A because I'll just show you the options for your clarity. So because one, this is there in option A, we can very conveniently uh, strike the uh, option A. Of course, C can also be eliminated and D as well can be eliminated. And we are left with only and only one correct option that is B, which is the correct answer. Which one of the following is a filter feeder? Let us start with an understanding of what exactly a filter feeder is. These are basically creatures that are found in marine environment. Let's imagine there is a water body with a lot of dissolved components and suspended particles that are common in that area. Filter feeders are those who remove the suspended particles and consume them as a part of their diet. Now take into account all the available options that is catfish, octopus, oyster and pelican. With the exception of oysters, in majority of cases they consume large food particles. Simply put, oysters are only organisms. The oysters are the only organisms which are capable of separating and extracting these suspended particles and feeding themselves. As a result, the correct answer for the question is answer C, whereas A, uh, catfish, B, octopus and D, pelican can be conveniently uh, slashed off. The common carbon metric supported by UNEP has been developed for what? The common carbon metric is actually used as a measurement of carbon footprint made by various buildings all around the world. Because the construction of their buildings as well as uh, various other non-scientific types of constructions and designs has resulted in increased carbon footprints in uh, many parts of the world, particularly in the developing regions. This has now become one of the major contributors to an ever increasing carbon footprint. Thus, the first statement that is assessing the carbon footprint of building operations around the world is the correct option. Consider the following statements. Asiatic lion is naturally found in India only. Double humped camel is naturally found in India only. One horned uh, rhinoceros is naturally found in India only. Now, which of the statement is uh, correct out of all? Now, if you look at the first statement, that is the Asiatic lion is found in India only. This statement is correct because they are found in the famous Gir forest in Gujarat. Whereas if we go by the second statement that is which states that the double humped camel uh, is naturally found in India only, this is a false statement because they are not only found, they are not only limited to India, they can be found in other parts of the world as well such as China, Afghanistan, Mongolia etc. The third statement states that the one horned rhinos uh, is naturally found in India only. The statement is also false because of the same reason that it is not only restricted to India but it can be found in other places as well such as we have Nepal, Bhutan, Pakistan etc. Uh, thus as a resultant of the explanation given above the correct option, the correct answer is option A that is one only. R2 code of practices constitute a tool available for promoting the adoption of. If we talk in details about the R2 code of practices, uh, R2 code of practices is primarily concerned with the recycling process. So when it comes to recycling, we frequently talk about the three R's, that is reduce, reuse, recycle. Now at the here, uh, if you talk about the R2, it's a practice that has been started by SERI, that is Sustainable Electronic Recycling International. To take care of the electronic recycling so that the electronic wastes that are becoming a huge burden in the 21st century uh, to be efficiently dealt with. The first statement states, if you can see the first statement, that environmentally responsible practices in electronics recycling industry is the correct statement. Whereas the other uh, statements that is B, C and D do not hold true as far as the R2 code of practices is concerned. Why is there a concern about copper smelting plants? Copper smelting plants and now frequently regarded 
as one of the primary sources of pollution of all kinds. In certain ways, they contribute to land degradation since many of the heavy metals end up leaching through the soil. They make the soil so rich in one type of mineral that the soil productivity decreases and during the smelting process, a variety of hazardous gases are released uh, at the same time. So there are various pollutants like carbon monoxide, sulphur dioxide and so on which affect the air quality while also contributing to a higher greenhouse gas concentrations in the environment. As a result of these copper smelting plants, uh, we have to either, uh, it has been seen that most of the copper smelting plants have been closed. Moving on to the first statement, the first statement states that they may release lethal quantities, lethal quantities of carbon monoxide into the environment which is correct. The second statement, if you look at the second statement, it states that the copper slag, we are discussing about the copper slag, it can cause leaching of some heavy metals into the environment. Now what exactly do you mean by copper slag? Now when you melt copper, some impurities they rise to the surface. As a result, the impurities are eliminated from the final products output. So that is what slag is all about. Now when it is really emitted or released into the environment, it frequently results in soil pollution and degradation. So as we had seen, the first statement as well as the second statement both are correct. Moving on to the third statement which states that the release of sulphur dioxide as a pollutant. This statement also is very correct in itself. As a result, it is the most significant causes of pollution. Thus, we notice that 1, 2 and 3, all these are valid assertions. So, uh, by simple lo logic, as we can see, that option D, which has all 1, 2 and 3 as correct options, as correct statements. So, D is our correct option. With reference to furnace oil, consider the following statements. Now, furnace oil is regarded as a fuel oil as well. It is an extremely heavy oil that is created in one of the final stages of fractional distillation, which is noticed when you distillate, purify or refine crude oil. Uh, this is frequently used as a lubricant in a large machinery and it is oil which has a very limited application. However, with the advancement of the technology, it is now being employed in a variety of applications. So if we look at the first statement which states that it is a product of oil refineries, this assertion is correct. Moving on to the second statement which states that some industries use it to generate uh, power. Even though this fuel oil or furnace oil has a very low calorific value which means it doesn't create a lot of energy. Uh, it is nevertheless utilized extensively to generate power and electricity in many regions of the world. So this statement is also a valid statement. Moving on to the next statement, that is the third statement. Uh, it states that it use causes sulphur emission into the um, environment. Because it is a heavy oil, when it is burned, the pollutants produced are numerous and sulphur emissions are one of the most significant sources of emissions when a crude oil is burned. As a result, this is likewise a true statement as the above two. Uh, thus, the option D, which has all the three, one, two and three is the correct option.